Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and this is my 2002 Ford Crown Victoria P71 Police Interceptor. Now, the reason it's still on the drive, not going around four drives, is because I haven't got an MOT on it yet. And to do that, I need to make some changes to the lights. So let me talk you through all of that. So I have been collecting bits and pieces from around the world, from Rock Auto in, wherever the hell Rock Auto is in America, from Amazon, so wherever that's coming from, China, I expect, and from down the road in um, Staplehurst, from Car Builder Solutions. So what we need to be doing is a few minor changes to the lights, basically, to make it road legal for the UK. We need to be adding a fog light, which is going to be tricky. We need to be making sure the front lights are all okay and having orange turn signals at the back. And this is the first thing I'm really quite excited to try. I don't know if this is an old wives' tale or if it's going to be true or not, but apparently if you put a green light in a red tail lamp unit, it shows orange. So let's find that one out first because that's easy and I'm really quite interested to know. Right, so as it stands, the entire light cluster appears to flash. I'm not quite sure what this bottom section is meant to be because I've never seen it do anything just yet. But what we need to do is separate out the brake light function and the indicator function because there are multiple bulbs in there. So one comes on with the foot brake, one comes on with the indicator. If this doesn't work, there is the other option that you can buy a later version of these clusters where this lower section is actually an orange turn signal. Under bonnet lamps work underneath uh, boot lids as well. Who knew? Right, now. In keeping with most vehicles on the planet, it's just three of these bolts, nuts, we call them, 11 millimeter. So I'll quickly whip those off. That oh, slides out like that and then the lights are free. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So the two bottom ones are just blank. I was trying to work out what was in the bottom half of this thing, but basically they're nothings. So let's just so make this thing simple and clear for myself. I'm just going to quickly put on the indicators and then the brakes to see what happens when these things shine. So indicators is apparently only that one. I'm not actually convinced that I haven't just got a dead bulb on this, so I'm going to quickly switch these out over and compare the difference. Ah, that one's dead. That's brakes only treated myself to the smallest knife in the world the other day. I think it's called a Spyderco bug and it's so tiny. These were not expensive these bulbs from Amazon ah, but these were dual filament which oh these are as well okay. So let's see what happens when I fire these ones up. All right that's indicators only that's very bright. That's brakes only. Indicator and brake, they flash together, okay. Right, so that's established that this is basically useless for the UK, so I'm gonna have to, well, I don't know, are there gonna be reflectors in there? I think basically drill out holes in the back of this, mount these in the back of there somehow, and then go from there. But first of all, I wanna see if these do really show orange or not. Blimey, they actually do. I was not at all convinced that was gonna work, but do you know what, it, it actually kinda of does. Who knew? Comparison, that's the, the green light inside the red lamp. And that's the red light in the red lamp. Probably exactly the same on camera, but in real life, there's quite a bit of difference. Now here at the front, things are a little bit easier. I've had a chat with my MOT man and done a bit of research on the internet as well. There's lots of knowledge to know about this kind of stuff. If this was a newer car, 2011 or basically 10 years or younger, it would have to go through an IVA, which means everything would have to be as it would be if it was a brand new car sold new here in the UK. But because it's an older import, it's pushing 20 years, it doesn't have to go through that process. So I can leave the lamps as they are, functioning as they do currently, but they do have to work properly. And as it stands, I've got a headlamp out, I've got a running light out on the side, and this headlight, as you may have noticed, is kind of wonky. And that's because they are held in with little metal strips, like on a Ford Mondeo. And one of them is missing for some reason. So I had to order these up from Rock Auto in America, and these cost six pounds to get, but delivery took it to over 20. So I figured if I'm gonna be buying them, I may as well load up on all the light bulbs because once I started looking, I'm realizing that the headlight bulbs and everything else is really unusual light fitting which you don't have in this country. I may as well stock up on all the bulbs I need to get the front end looking as it should. And something I should have bought when I was making an order was a new set of the little clips that hold this panel on. This will be easy to remove because there's only one of these 
on this side of the car. So this just slides out and there you have one released headlight. Now, these headlight bulbs, I'm sure, are massively common in America. They're 9007 slash P50 or an HP5, which is a size we just don't get in this country. And I did do a fair bit of hunting, and to be honest, if I bought it off Amazon, it would have cost exactly the same as if I bought it from America. So, collected it with the rest of the order. Massive plastic chunk on the bottom. A little bit wasteful design if you're thinking in ecological terms. Remember how this whole thing works. Fit the bulb in there, in it goes, and the collar goes on afterneath. Afterwards, not afterneath. That's not English. There we go, that now works. That was a dead light previously, and it's an awful lot crisper and brighter than it was before. Now, these side lights are really easy to undo. Just, well, easy once you've got the headlamp out. You can go in from behind, but it's a bit of a tricky maneuver. But it does have a second wire here, which I don't think goes anywhere, but there is an opening for another light bulb in the bottom, which I think would be a strobe if the car was in like police service. Let's check the other side. Oh, that's interesting. This light hasn't got that extra light socket in the bottom. Curious. Yep, that's all good. Now I can pop this back in and use my lovely shiny new lamp retainer bracket things. You know what, I'm going to use both the new ones because that's new and shiny. And because I don't know how old these light bulbs are, and it's always better to change them in pairs anyway, I'm going to quickly pop out this other one and change this one as well. And this one can be my spare in the glove box. Well that's good, now I've got a full complement of working lights here at the front of the car, as Ford intended. Um, Hang on, let's make sure the main beams work as well. Never thought of that. Um, seems bright, I'm sure that's good. So as I was saying, we now have a full complement of working lights here at the front of the car. One thing I would like to look at with the help of an auto electrician in the near future, not for the MOT, because it should go through the MOT as it is, but it would be nice to have it for the future because there are no side marker indicators on this. So if you're turning at a side junction, anyone driving along the road wouldn't be able to see what you're doing. It would be nice if I could take one of the indicator flashes from one of these central indicators and wire it to these side markers as well, so they blink as in tandem effectively, so people from the side of the car can see you waiting to turn out of a side junction. There is also another option, a company called Whalen in America do um, strobe lights, red and blue LED strobes that mount on the outside of the door mirrors. However, you can get orange LEDs that will fit inside those same cases. So then you could fit an outside turn signal in the middle of the car on the door mirror, which looks like police equipment, which would be quite fun. But as I say, that is all for jobs for the future with the help of an auto electrician once I've got this thing through an MOT, which as I say, this should go through now perfectly as it is, fingers crossed. Now one last little thing here is this is an underbonnet lamp, which it doesn't have a bulb in it, so I figured that'd be quite good to see if we could put a bulb in. This is a little Philips 906. I'm not sure what's going to trigger that. I can't see a switch on it anywhere. I'll have to go back and read the manual, figure out how that's meant to work, because currently it doesn't. One final bit of sleuth work before it gets dark. There are two weird wires dangling from the boot lid in here. This one is a constant live, even though everything is turned off, the ignition key is out, nothing's turned on in the car, that's a constant 12 volts. This one is not. Uh, so it's clearly switched by something, but I don't know what. Now luckily, I didn't rush into this mob handed because the first thing I heard was that what you need to do to separate the indicators, the brakes and the tail light function is to cut a wire down in near the pedal box on the front inner wing. And that then separates the flasher from the brake function on these lights. What I discovered in the meantime though, is if you do that, that disables the part of the circuit which activates and deactivates the cruise control. So you can never add cruise control to the car if you do that. So luckily I checked into that. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna patch in the brake feed to the high level brake light up there and then change all of the bulbs to LED. So not putting too much draw on the circuit. Obviously you'll have to start off with um, regular bulbs because it's gonna be weird American ones again that I haven't got. Then. And I'm thinking this as I say, I'm trying to work out exactly how I'm going to do this whilst I'm talking. Um, so that will then give me the brake feed to these bulbs here. 
So then I will cut the feed to the indicator here at the lamp, and then I will use this bulb holder, which I've purchased off of the internet, to run this down to the bottom of the lamp, and then we'll have our indicator separate from our brake and tail light. I think that should work. Well, the high level brake lap comes out really easy. It's just a little flip head screw on either side. So that just pops off. Then you unclip the, uh, then you unclip the wire from the bottom. And this just squeezes out. And these bulbs, it turns out, are like a, a giant version of a 5W5, but with the same fitting. So I've got lots of these little LED ones knocking around. Let's just see if they work. Yep, that works. And the LED is actually brighter than the old incandescent, despite being half the size. Because now what we've got to do is figure out which of these three wires does what, because there are the same three wires and all four bulbs. We've got black, which I reckon is going to be an earth, probably brown with a hint of mauve to the overall colour of it, and one which is kind of orange with a light bluey purple stripe. So fortunately I have got this book, which is the 2002 wiring diagram book from Ford. Thank you Ben for the loan of this, very handy indeed. And what this tells me is the OG slash LB, which is orange and light blue, is the turn signal. So this is the one I need to be separating out to move it to the other light. I wonder if that's all I need to do in fact. If I just separate out that turn signal to a new bulb, would that work? It couldn't be that easy, surely? I'm just thinking before I make the incision, just a simple cut and then solder, is this all I really need to do? Is this literally everything I need to do in order to put separate indicators on there? That just seems too easy. I'm sure there's gonna be other implications and I'll mess something else up. I'm trying to think through every possibility because currently stop, turn, break is in both of these two bulbs. So if I then cut that, that just means it won't flash on that bulb. It'll move on to the other bulb and flash there. The tail light won't be affected because that's the other other light, I think. Oh God, I hope it... What if though, I didn't mention it in the wiring diagram, what if I cut that and then it doesn't have a tail light anymore? There's kind of really only one way to find out and that's just to do it, which scares me. Well, they all kind of need cutting anyway at some point. Okay, let's see what works now or doesn't. The good news is that's not flashing, so that worked in that respect. So let's just try the side lights, the tail lights, let's see what happens then. Okay, that still works. That's still flashing, so that's, that's wrong on that one, but that one is now correct, that's not flashing. The brakes with everything on. The problem there being though, that the indicator overrides the brake, so I don't know what was going to be going on. So I'd, now I will just push the brake pedal on its own. Okay, so what I think I now know, probably-ish, is that this needs a separate feed taken, whoops, in the form of this green wire here from the high level brake light in order to trigger that working. This is, I don't know, I'm not an auto electrician, so I'm kind of figuring this out as I go along. Oh man, alive. <clears throat> now, if you caught any of the earlier Crown Victoria episodes, you'll know I didn't have a spare wheel when I bought this car. This I picked up secondhand from a chap called Rory in Essex, who has got a couple of other uh, Crown Victorias. And uh, so thank you very much indeed for this, Rory. Money well spent. The tyre is a genuine Goodyear, but it's absolutely shot. Um, but we'll get this whole thing sandblasted and then uh, either powder coated or painted nicely black to, it's actually quite hard to see because it's tucked underneath the parcel shelf. What I've done is I have stripped back an area of the, uh, what do you call it, the insulation, the green insulation from this brake light, which I'll now tin up. Try and find the end of just tinned of this, which I've now lost of course, and bring the two together without hurting myself or setting fire to the car. Let's try and do this in a direction that's going to work. That is now pushed back through the parcel shelf so that can be reconnected to the high level brake light. The green wire is now tucked inside as much of the chassis bulkhead, whatever you want to call it, the structure of the car as possible to be hidden. It pops out down here and before I make the final solder I'm just going to do a proof of concept to make sure I've done the right thing. Okay, so only that one is indicating, which is correct. 
is this going to come up with a brake light? Yes, both bulbs are coming on, which means I have done a fix. Okay, so now what I need to do is before I solder this, or when I solder this, run a second spur from here to the second bulb, and obviously cut that as well. So then we've got ourselves both brake lights coming on just with the feed from this green wire. And then we can take the feed from one of these indicator bulbs and run it to the new bulb, which is gonna sit in the bottom. Is this all making sense? Even though I now know this is what I'm meant to be doing, it still scares the bejesus out of me to try and be doing it. Okay, so we've now got tail light switch come on with the tail light switch. Let's just quickly go and try the foot pedal for the brakes. Well, I'm thinking that worked. Let's double check the indicators don't do anything. They don't, which is a um, good thing that I'm excited the indicators don't work. Never mind, it's fine for now. Okay, that's good for this corner. Now I need to take a spur off this green wire inside the boot, run it down to this corner, and then do the same thing again on this pair of lights over here. Annoyingly, I have managed to lose one of these bulbs on this side, so I'm only running with three bulbs. It's somewhere in the car, but it's a big car and I can't find it. Okay, I'll do this off camera because this will take a little while and it's getting dark. Join me again when we've got four, well, three functioning stop tail lights. I just had to run out and buy a new soldering iron. It's not an expensive one, but the old one wasn't actually melting the solder anymore. So I figured that was time for a change. There we go. Functioning tail lights for just the uh, tail section. Let's give it a quick dry with the stop. Excellent. Now just to sort out some indicators. Okay, a bit of Heath Robinson here. We've got an earth up here, which is actually broken off from the boot lid. Running down here, clamped on there to this new headlight, uh, sorry, light holder with a bulb in it, and I've peeled off them. Let's have a quick check what happens when I touch the wires together. Yes, it's as I hoped, well, with the green wire as well. So either one will do the trick. Yes, I've got flashing lights, excellent. This is as simple as I'd hoped it would be. Now before I get too carried away, I need to work out next how I'm going to mount one of these into here. Uh, I don't think I can actually cut that clever three slot hole thing. That's gonna be a little bit too advanced for me and a drill. Maybe a Dremel could do it, but let's have a quick play. In fact, it's not even the same pattern. That's a two slot, not a three slot. Either way, I need a hole that's as round as that. So I'm gonna find me a big drill, I guess. Let's start by taking this pin off here, because I can't drill through that. So what I've got is a 28 millimeter, I forgot the name of these things, um, holy drilly cuttery thing, which is slightly oversized on the size of the hole, but then I've got these little tags on the edge to make room for as well. And since I'm not gonna be able to cut them, I don't think, I'll go with the oversizedness. Hmm, just need to cut a little slot on the side. I'm kind of there. And annoyingly, this is, one big hole. I was hoping that was divided across the middle and I could have the fog light on that side and the indicator on this side, but it is just one large aperture. That's a shame. Oh well. And that's good news. Proof of, if you like, that it is reflective on the inside, even though there's no lights mounted in it. Why did Ford do that? I wish Ford though had divided it into two pieces, that would be much more useful from my point of view. Excellent. With a file thingy, I've actually managed to cut or file edges to it so I can put that in there, rotate it and lock it in place. What I have realized though is I only ordered two of these bulb holders because I didn't think I'd be needing any more than that. So I'm gonna have to just do all the prep for it and order two more and get that soldered in later on. I reckon it'll pass the MOT though with just one either side though, but it'd be nice to have the complete complement once it's all done. Right now, let's do the other one.
Well, there you go. How do you like them apples? We now have the separate orange indicator down the bottom. When I've ordered up the second uh, bulb holder, we can have the full width of orange, but that is an orange separate one that we'll pass in the MOT. It'll just look a little bit nicer, and also it'll flash a little slower when I've got the second uh, bulb in there as well, giving a little bit more resistance. Plus, I'm also gonna put a repeater on the side again, adding resistance to the circuit, but yeah. And to think, I was gonna pay someone to come and do this for me. I'm quite proud of myself for achieving this bit. I just need to repeat that on the passenger side, or the driver's side, uh, because it's an American car, obviously. So I've then got both orange indicators and then figure out how to wire up the fog light, which I might actually get someone to come back and do. Anyway, right, let's crack on. And there you go, indicator number two, also working here on the back of the car. I am mightily proud of myself for achieving this. I'm annoyed and disappointed at myself for wasting about two weeks over Christmas when I could have been doing this quite happily because I've made an appointment for someone to come around and do it who didn't turn up. So I've wasted two weeks when I could have been having this thing a little bit closer to the road. Right, now I just need to work out how the hell the fog light goes in. Okay, here is where things start to tax my somewhat limited knowledge of auto electrics. You have to have, according to the MOT rig, you have to have, and I've just checked this with the MOT tester I'm gonna take the car to, the rear fog light which will only come on when the dipped headlights or main beam headlights are on, not side lights, which would be way too easy. And it also has to switch off with the lights and not come on again when you turn the lights on. So you need a thing called a momentary switch, which is one of these that returns to the same position after you push it each time. So when you turn the lights off, they go off. And I've bought myself a relay from Car Builder Solutions so I can make this all work. These now, I've got to find the right wires to do it all. So I think what I need to do First of all, is find a place to screw this to. And fortunately, on Crown Vix, this panel here levers out quite easily. And there's a big gap behind it because there are two so pre-drilled or pre-molded areas for attaching extra switches. One is for the moving the uh, the pedals back and forth, and I forget what the other one's to do with. Anyway, there's actually the one little Easter egg of these cars is that one of those features is always pre-wired, and you just need the switch. So you need to find one of these panels with that. Um, button in it and you instantly activate whatever functionality is on that. I don't think it's the movable pedals, I think it's something else, I forget what. But you know, you, you do gain a feature by having that. Um, but there is a second blank one just there which I can drill through and mount my... Uh, oops, I've lost it. I can drill through and mount my fog light switch in there. Excellent, so that's one problem solved. What I need to do now is take a an earth somewhere a permanent live and then a switched live which will come from the light switch circuit or the switch circuit itself and this one goes off to the switch which then goes off on another bit of wire to the boot to the fog lamp which I've then got to find a home for in the back of the car. Right let's see if I can get this light switch panel out as well because then I can get to the back of that and find those wires. It's cold, so coffee is very important right now. Right, I did have a thought that maybe rather than emptying into the dashboard, I could use the loom down here, but none of the colors in here, in this bunch of wires, match up with what's on the paperwork down here. At the headlights, there is a light green with black, and it says this light green and black goes all the way through. Unfortunately, I cannot find it down here in the footwell. There's another bunch of cables down there. I couldn't locate it in either. Um, I tried undoing the uh, fuse box, but it doesn't go anywhere. So in the end, leave it out the uh, light switch and on the back of that interestingly it says for police use only this is a nice little touch I wasn't aware of right so here's the bulb which needs to come on so that's everything off apart from the ignition headlights should be on yep they still work which is good okay that does nothing so that's bad okay that didn't go well Well, I'll be honest, I don't know why that isn't working. So uh, I've bought another switch, it still doesn't work. So either I, the instructions are wrong and I've wired it in incorrectly, or the relay box doesn't work, or, or something else I don't understand. So I'm taking my mind off that by running a power lead down to the back of the car to get that bit down out of the way. This bottom bus past of the bench just literally lifts straight out and like on a Rover P6, this rear bench appears to uh, just be holding my two bolts. Now I know that isn't an 18 millimeter impact socket, but I haven't got one. So 
making do. I'm surprised how little detri detritus <laughs> is uh, lurking underneath the seat. There's pretty much nothing under it apart from a McDonald's straw wrapper. And out comes the back seat. And here, behind the sound deadening behind the back seat, is that hole that people have mentioned to me before that goes straight through to the boot. That's pretty easy to get hold of. All right, I'll run a cable through there. Right, okay, I've looked at all that again and I think I know where I've made a mistake. I'm not 100% sure, but I think. So I've redone it, which is why I've done it with chock blocks in the first place, and I've redone it hopefully correctly this time. So, fingers very firmly crossed. Lights on. Now if I find the button. Oh good, nothing happens. Excellent, that's exactly what I hoped would happen. Okay, so let's try the other switch, which I got from Halfords a minute ago. Still nothing. Okay, so this doesn't work. I think actually I may have realised what the problem is. I don't think I'm actually getting any switched power from these. No, I'm not. So these clampy clamp things haven't actually done anything, which is why the light isn't coming on. So these things, which are always stupid and useless, have continued to be both stupid and useless. Oh, it's not even pierced the plastic sh um, shroudy stuff. That's why I've not worked. Let's do this in a different way and try again. So, after an awful lot of faffing, the result is a light that comes on permanently, whether the switch is pushed or unpushed, or whether the headlights are on or off, regardless. I've tried reconfiguring the wires in multiple ways. I've tried taking different feeds off the back of the switch, earth in different places. I'm just currently taking a permanent live from one of the permanent lives in the boot. Okay, this is not a 100% success, but we're very, very close. I've got the indicators and the brake lights all separated and sorted out, but I cannot make this thing work. I've had a long chat with Car Builder Solutions and they've been incredibly helpful. They've made a few suggestions, trying a bigger wattage bulb in case that wasn't working. I've tried different earth points. I've tried taking the permanent feed from a different place. I've tried different wires on the back of the switch, but nothing is working. All I can get is it on all the time or it not working at all. So, They've suggested it might be a faulty box, and because I want this video to go out tomorrow, today, Saturday, you're watching this, um, I'm gonna call it a day, and hopefully when the replacement part turns up, we can make it work. On the plus side, I've got the, uh, the feed wire for the bulb run through, so that's a difficult bit. I've got the feed place chosen from behind there. That's another difficult bit, so it's just a really simple matter of connecting this little box up when a functioning one turns up, so fingers crossed, that's all it's gonna be. Right, thank you for watching, and hopefully the next time we have this car in the video, we'll be heading off for an MOT to go and get it road legal in the UK at last, because I cannot wait to get behind the wheel and drive this thing somewhere, anywhere, in McCrown, Victoria. Right, thank you for watching. Join me again next time, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know you wanna do it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you soon.